Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. We've got some I don't work here lady stories, so let's jump right into our first story of the day by Upper Crunch. I don't work here, sir. Goth edition. This happened just this morning. It's not exceptionally exciting, but it amused me and figured you guys would enjoy the visual. It's my 35th birthday today and we needed some groceries, so we decided to go to Costco. I felt like getting dressed up for once and it's my weekend so when we arrived I was resplendent in a 9 inch nail shirt, platform docks, black jeans and a studded belt with all the loops and chains. I'm almost 6 foot tall and female and we had our adorable 2 year old daughter with us, chatting happily to the flower we had just picked together. Clearly not an employee of anywhere. On my way to produce, I stopped past the irresistible table of women's pants and found myself digging through the pile for the last pair of size 12 aubergine skinny jeans. I had moved the pile to check the one behind it when I heard, Tuna? next to me. I looked up, and there's an older man and his tiny wife standing next to the table, staring at me expectantly. Tuna? he says again more insistently. I'm baffled, my brain just not comprehending what's going on, and then it clicks. Oh, tuna, sorry, no idea, I say with a polite shrug and turn back to digging halfway to China through the pile to find my size. The man makes an annoyed noise and I straighten up, genuinely not wanting to be rude. Yeah, I don't work here. I gesture to my daughter next to me in the cart and looked out of my boots. The man and his wife simultaneously look me up and down and then say, You don't work here? No, I say with finality, amazed that the scene is actually unfolding. At this stage, my husband, who looks like a TV Viking wearing a Servant in Heaven Ruler in Hell shirt, complete with Satan image, pulls up next to me excitedly holding up a three-pack of life straws and his arrival is enough to send Mr. and Mrs. Tuna away with a furtive glance back at us and our daughter. I've never been mistaken for an employee before. It was a good birthday surprise. Do you guys think that these people being old is an excuse for them thinking that this person who's all dressed up in pretty much goth attire actually works at this Costco? Let me know in the comments down below if you think it's acceptable because they're an older couple or if it was something that they very well should have realized is not something an employee would wear. Our next story is by Crazy Glider Mama. I don't work here with a twist. This happened about 18 plus years ago, but I thought it'd be fun to share here since it's not your usual I don't work here story. I was shopping at Walmart way back when some of them still sold aquarium fish. I was going through the aisles looking for anything that caught my eye. Two guys in their 40s were waiting by the fish. I go around the store and wrap up my shopping when I realize I forgot cat treats. So I return to the pet section and I see the two guys still waiting there. I ask them if they asked for help. They told me that someone was paged, but they've been waiting for almost 45 minutes, at which time they were understandably pissed. I told them I worked at a pet store in the fish department and made small talk with them. I looked at the sink setup they had there, noticed a net, a specimen container and bags. I offered to catch them their fish even though I didn't work there because I knew how to do it. Their eyes lit up and they were overwhelmed with appreciation. I got them out the four huge calico fantail goldfish and even though I didn't work there, it gave me a secret satisfaction because I knew they genuinely appreciated my help. I told them as I left that I have no idea how they're going to get rung up, but for waiting that long, the fish should be free. I definitely remember when Walmart was selling aquarium fish in the store. I actually wasn't aware that they stopped doing that, but it makes sense because I imagine the lifespan of those fish probably weren't too good being taken care of by Walmart employees. This next story is by Earth Rogue. Nice lady asks for help buying a computer and we get free CDs and job offers. This is going back to the late 90s when Circuit City was still big. My friend and I were somewhere near the end of high school and were there to look for a couple of CDs. A bit about us and what we were like back then. Nerds. I was a wannabe computer nerd with library pretensions and my first goatee. My hair was blonde and my beard was orange, naturally. I was probably wearing flip-flops, khaki cargo shorts and a far side or umbro shirt. My friend? 
He was on a whole different level. He was over six foot and skinny. He always wore khaki slacks or jeans. We were in Arizona in the summer. A polo shirt with undershirt and Birkenstocks with socks. He'd grown his hair long and about half a year earlier, he had a perm to try out an afro. He hadn't cut his hair since then. He was and is a computer nerd who really knew his stuff. He looked like he worked at a store like Circuit City. We had his mom's mid-80s Suburban. So anyway, we found our music, Third Eye Blind's first album for me, and headed over to the computer area to dream. He was building a gaming computer at the time and wanted to show me the video cards he wanted and was explaining the pros and cons of a couple different types. An older lady, probably in her 50s, approaches us and asks him for help when she's done helping me. I say I'm just here for music and looking at computer stuff for fun and my friend says he can try to help her. To be fair, I'm pretty sure he dressed the way he did because he liked this kind of thing. She wants a computer for email because all of her friends have email and she feels left out. The selection is overwhelming and she doesn't know where to start. We head over and quickly start narrowing down the selection for her. My friend is way overthinking it and I convince him she needs bare bones capability for basic internet, email, and probably some basic word processing. We get a computer with built-in modem and monitor picked out along with a mouse and a keyboard and make sure she knows how to use them to click on files, that kind of thing. Then my friend explains how to get internet to the computer and I write down notes for her so she can remember later. We even offer a few suggestions on what email to get and show her how AOL IM and chat rooms work if she really wants to impress her friends. The whole process took quite a while, but we didn't have anything to do and would have been bored otherwise, so it was something to do. We help her get everything together, check out, and help her get it in her car. Then we head back in to get our music, pay, and figure out what to do. We're heading to the checkout when we see the lady coming in with the store manager. She's going on about how helpful we were and praising my friend for being such a great employee. The manager and my friend are both trying to explain that he doesn't work there. Finally, she realizes we're just two random guys and starts apologizing, and now we're embarrassed and insisting we were happy to help. She insists on buying our music for us. After we get checked out and say goodbye to her, the manager pulls us aside and offers us both jobs. We both say we'll think about it and my friend decides later to work there. He gets a couple of our other friends hired there. We were moving so it wasn't a good time for me, but I thought it was pretty cool still. I know this isn't the usual format, no one was irate for this sub, but I thought I'd share anyway. Hope you enjoyed. It's always fun to see a number of these wholesome spectrum type stories instead of the classic irate, head to head, bronco, bullfight that seems to always go down in these I don't work here stories where they're always grabbing your shoulder or your collar or whatnot and tugging you around. Instead, this time they help somebody out super well that they both got off for jobs on the spot. That's pretty good. Although the job security wasn't that great because, as many of you may know, Circuit City went the way of the dodo. Our next story is by Dependent List 3175 Pulling your phone out when you're working is against company policy. Lady, I'm 14. A bit of context. This was back in January of this year. I had just turned 14. The funny thing is my birthday is on January 1st. The amount of people with my birthday, you could probably count them on your hands. I think at this point I was 5'11 with a visible beard. I had people mistake me most of the time for a 16 or 17 year old. Now my birthday had just passed, my parents are not the best with presents, so they just gave me money. So I went on the weekend to chill with my friend. It was like 12pm, we went out to eat and my friend started talking about how he wished he could get a PC. Now me and him are close. I go to his house most days of the week, 3-4 to four times. Sometimes I stay over, we're basically brothers. I call his parents auntie and uncle, same with him. He comes to my house, stays, we even have rooms in each other's houses. Now he was born 4 days after me. I really wanted to get him something really nice. So he said let's go chill at my house. So I call an Uber, not to his house, it was to PC World. We get halfway there and he clocks what is happening. He says this isn't the way to my house. I assure him that we're going to do something very fun. Then he sees PC World and he asks why are we here. 
I tell him it's an early birthday present. I had to give it to him early as I couldn't go on a school day. So I tell him get anything you want. He goes mad, he tries to reject, but we all know how that turns out. So we are both in the shop and I recommend him something and tell him where it is. He goes to get it. Then I hear a lady clearing her throat. I turn around and she asks me where something is. I say I don't know. I then turn around assuming that was the end of that. She then starts ranting about how I need to follow company policy and not pull out my phone when talking to customers. The next thing she did shocked me. She lunged and grabbed my arm. Now the human reaction is to push her off. Now I'm 5 foot 11 and she was around 5 foot 5 at most and she went flying into the PCs. There was a loud alarm that went off. One monitor fell on the floor and it smashed. Security came running to the scene. So did my friend. Now my friend is a little bit scared of confrontation so he didn't do anything. I think he was more scared than me. She was screaming about how I assaulted her and that I pulled my phone out. She said I worked there. However, the manager shut her down instantly. It was very funny. I think the police got called in the mayhem. They then took both our stories and started giving me dirty looks. They told me to call my parents, but I refused as I didn't want to drag them into it. But eventually the footage came and it was proven that she grabbed me first and I pushed her off. Eventually I had to give my name, but I was free to leave. The police did contact my parents. The good thing was the manager gave us a 20% discount. So that was good. Honestly, knowing how much PCs cost, I might be more than willing to let some Karen grab and pull on my arm if I can get 20% off of it. PCs can be some pricey stuff, but depending on what you do, it's definitely worth it. This next story is by Mikubo. That will be $10. So this happened like a week ago, and until then, I was feeling a bit skeptical of the stories and meeting angry Karen seemingly on a daily basis. But now, I've finally met one myself and let me tell you, I've had enough. Okay, I ride mountain bikes and it basically is my addiction. I love every single part of it, including repairing my bike. Well, the time of repairs had come so I hopped on my secondary dirt jump bike and went to my favorite bike store. This place is awesome. They have the best employees and even though it's not a big place, I still love it. They have lent me tools anytime I had technical issues on a ride, and I make sure to return the favor by becoming a regular customer in there. But it was closed, so I decided to go to a different store that I've never been to. On with the story. I came inside and asked for a 27.5 inch inner tube. The cashier told me that they were running low on stock on these earlier, so she needs to check if they still have them. She wandered off to the storage area and I killed the time by looking at bikes when I suddenly hear the door open. A middle-aged lady, Kay, came in holding a kid's bike. She didn't look like a textbook Karen but I could definitely sense that something was off. Karen shoving the bike into my hands, fix this. I say what? Realizing that I'm wearing a Fox t-shirt so she thinks maybe I work there. Oh, I don't work here now. I have now realized that I've been training for this moment my whole life. Reading these stories. My brain started working on the highest gear and I've come up with the best plan. I say, alright, that'll be $10. Karen, obviously satisfied with the price, here you go and hurry up. I then told her to wait outside and that it won't be long. After a few seconds the cashier came back and told me I was lucky because they had the last two inner tubes left. I thanked her and paid 6 bucks for my inner tube. If you haven't figured it out yet, yes, that was 10 bucks Kay has given me. I pocketed the leftover $4 and left the store. On my way out, Kay asked me if it was done yet, but I just sat on my bike and rode off to the sunset without saying a word. It's effective and it worked out for OP, but there is something that just feels notably wrong about taking 10 bucks from a random Karen like that. But I mean, they were being rude, they weren't letting you finish any statements and whatnot. So there's two sides to it, really. This next story is by Hot Pocket 69. Yes, I'm wearing the uniform, but I don't work here. 
I met the Nike store about a year ago, and I used to work there two summers prior so I still know a few people. I have on some leggings that say, just do it down the side and a Nike tank top and some white and grey Air Max. I'm holding a bag an associate gave me and I'm talking with my friend who works there. She's looking up an item for me on their mobile point of sale. Looks like an iPhone. An older, Karen-esque woman comes over and mentions something about the employees being on their phones. And I look over, making dead eye contact. She asks for my shopping bag and I tell her no, I'm using it. My friend slash the associate tells her she'll get one and I say, talk to you later girl and begin walking off. Karen then asks me to help her and I say, ma'am, I don't work here. And she said, I know, I'm sorry to bother you during your break, but I'm in a rush. Now, I could help, I've worked here before, but I won't. And I just look at her blankly and walk off. I'm leaving the store and I see this twiggy white kid I worked with as a manager now and he's been working out, so I speak to him. He's doing well, but here comes Karen. I'm empty handed since they didn't have what I needed. She starts complaining about me to him and we're both looking at each other with this huh face. And we both realize what's going on. He says she doesn't work here. She says, oh sorry, she just looked like it. Don't come to the Nike store and all Nike. And walked out, just going around demanding things and barking orders. I can kind of get how it's a little confusing if they're all dressed up in Nike stuff, but the attitude is just never necessary and I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree with me. And our final story of the day is by Skinner 93 Does this look like a restaurant? So a few years ago I worked at a restaurant slash bar. I would get off work around 3 or 4 am. On the day in question, I ended up clocking out at 4.40ish am and had to stop by Wally World to put up groceries for the week. I will be me and rude witch will be Karen. Keep in mind that I'm wearing all black. Black slip resistant steel toed shoes, black slacks, black polo shirt, black belt with silver butterflies because I wanted to, and even my hair tie was black. Other than the butterflies on my belt, the only color I had on was my name tag which was a green apple. So I'm at Wally World and have finished almost all of my shopping, just needed shampoo and conditioner. I was sitting on the floor looking at the shampoo and conditioner on the bottom shelf trying to find some that don't have anything I'm allergic to in them when Karen came up to me. This is what happened. Where is some brand name item that I can't remember? It used to be on the next aisle. I don't look up thinking she was talking to someone else. Karen getting louder. Where is item? I pick up a different shampoo bottle. Put down the freaking bottles and freaking answer me. I finally look up. What? Where the freak is freaking item? Why do you people insist on moving everything all the darn time? It's freaking ridiculous. I don't even know what that is. How would I know where it is? Maybe if you did more than just sit on your A, you would know where things are. Then you'd be able to help customers. Me shaking my head in confusion. I don't work here. Don't lie to me. I can see your name tag. Me standing up and putting my shampoo and conditioner choices in my cart. You mean the green apple that no Wally World employee wears? It doesn't matter. You have to help me. Does this look like Apple Restaurant? No? Well then, I don't have to help you. You're in uniform with a name tag. That means you have to help me. Let me explain something to you. I have been awake since 8 a.m. and at work since 10 a.m. I just clocked out a little less than an hour ago. It is 5.20 a.m. I don't have to help you with anything. I am going to get my groceries, pay, and go home so I can pass out for a few hours before I go back to work. You can freak off the side of a cliff for all I care. Just leave me alone. How dare you? Give me your manager now. Me pushing my cart away. Bless your heart, but you don't know how to listen. Have a blessed day. And off to the self-checkout I went. Moral of the story, don't mess with someone who's been awake for more than 20 hours. I would just say be careful for OP because wearing anything that can identify you to your actual job sometimes can unfortunately leave you having some kind of liability as far as publicizing yourself as an outward facing figure of the company and risk your job if you do something that is a little too controversial. Just a thought. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which one and why in the comment section down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe if you haven't and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you did, whether it was just watching the video or commenting, subscribing, whatever you do. Thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. Any single thing you do helps the channel grow that much more and I appreciate the heck out of it. I hope you all have a wonderful day and until next time, I'll be right here on the Storytime channel.